Hey all Blender fans out there, this is Eric Tobin here coming at you with another Blender tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to make a pop-up book and then we're going to rig this pop-up book with some, with some controllers and then we're going to render it in cycles. So let's get started here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Blender here. Alright. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on screencast so you can see what I'm doing here. And screencast keys. Save as defaults. And then I'm going to turn this guy on here. Alright, so now you should be able to see my keys here. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this default cube. And then I'm going to change the render engine over to Cycles. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a plane. And I'm going to scale it up. Alright, next I'm going to add another plane. I want to do is I want to set the origin of this plane so it flips up on its head. So the way I do that is I tab into edit mode and select this edge here, and then hit Shift S, cursor to selected, tab out edit mode, and then I'm going to go to uh, transform origin to 3D cursor. And so now when I rotate it. See, it rotates on its axis here. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to set up the material for this. Before I do that, I'm going to give this a quick save. And let's see what we do here. I'm going to call this Pop Up Hook. Oops. Tests. Alright, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to our compositing. I'm going to go over to materials and I'm going to add a new material. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a texture node. And a texture. And open this guy up and then I'm going to go to my desktop. And then what I have here is I have a ping right here. And what I've done is I've cut out the background of this little ping image. Alright, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the color to the color of that. Then I'm going to add a um, output. No, a uh, input and then the texture coordinate node. So, and then I'm going to connect UV to vector. Alright, next I'm going to go over to UV editing. What I need to do next is I need to unwrap this, so I'm going to tab into edit mode and then hit A to select everything, and then I'm going to go to unwrap. Alright, so now I got everything unwrapped. And, um, now I can, um, let's see. Now what I need to do is, is if I go back and render this, uh, let's see here. Now 
Now, if I go ahead and render this, we can see our image here. See, one thing you notice is it's facing the wrong way, so we need to fix that. So, what I can do is I'm going to go here and change this texture. And then um, what I need to do is I'm going to select this floor pane and I'm going to hit Ace to hide it for a second. Then I'm going to select this and I'm going to tap it in anim mode. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit A and make sure all my vertexes are selected. And then I'm going to hit R and then I'm going to hold down Control and then rotate it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit S and then X. And then S and Y. And I think I probably need to rotate this the other way. There we go. Okay, so now it's facing the right way. So now I can click back on this and hit Alt H to hide everything. Okay, we probably need to move this uh, plane up to just a little bit here. Uh, move it down just a little bit. Okay, so now we're good. So let me give this a quick save here. Now if we go into our render view, we should be able to see our little page here. Like that. One problem we have here is the transparency isn't transparent, so we need to fix that. So, so if we go over to solid again, and go back into our compositing uh, setup here, and then uh, go click on our plane, and what we need to do is we need to add two nodes. We need to add a... Um, transparent shader then we have to add a um, mix shader what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the transparent I'm going to put that on top then I'm going to take the diffuse shader from our other node and I'm going to put that in the bottom and I'm going to take the alpha from our image and use that as our factor. Then put this node into our surface. And give that a quick save. So now if we render. Oh, and Blender just crashed. Alright, I'm back to Blender again. And open up our scene back again. Okay. All right, let's try that again. So, 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 so now if we render. See, now my little Takai guy is transparent like it's supposed to be. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is we want to add a control controller so we can make this page flip up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click a bell and say maybe uh, right here and I'm going to add a text node. Text and I'm gonna rotate X ninety. And I'm gonna turn that around a little bit. Then 
in under my text settings, I want to reduce the size a little bit, made to 0.5. And then I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate. And one thing I noticed my screen cast turned off again. Let me, let me fix that because the Splinter crashed and I didn't have screen cast turned on again. So let me turn that back on real quick. Uh, okay. So next I'm going to click on this and I'm going to tab and add a mode. And we're going to make this one called um, flat. Tab out. And we're going to make this one called um, Page up. And give that a quick save. And then I want to select these two to put our point in the center here. Then I'm going to add another plane. So, then I'm going to hit rotate X90. No, I'm going to hit rotate Y90. Then I'm going to scale it down a little bit. And I'm just going to put this little slider where I want it to be. Just make him little all right there. And next I'm going to tab into edit mode. And then I'm going to go to face selection mode. Select that face and hit um, X. And only faces. Okay, then I'm going to tab out edit mode. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is... Let me give this a quick save real quick. Next thing I want to do is I want to make a uh, shape key for uh, animating the page slip up. So, so I'm going to click here and then I'm going to go to shape keys and then I'm going to add the base shape key and then another shape key. I'm going to call this shape key page. Then I'm going to tab into edit mode. <laughs> then I'm going to select this edge here. And shift S. Then I'm going to go cursor to selected. And then, uh, then I'm going to go down here and then I want to set the pivot point to 3D cursor. Then I'm going to select the entire thing by hitting A. And then I'm just going to rotate it up. Like so. Then I'm, then I'm going to tab it in a So now we have our shape key. So when this is 1, it's up. When this is 0, it's down. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is we need to add a driver to the shape key for our controller. So I'm going to right click on this and then I'm going to go to, um, oops. Ha, ha, 
bad driver. So, so, so now I'm going to go into our animation view. And I will set this to graph. And I'm going to go over to drivers. Okay, then we have our key here, so I'm going to hit end to show our properties. Right. And what we need to do is we need to give our variable first. It's going to be a text channel. Before we do that, let's go ahead and name everything. So, right, so we have this right here, which is our uh, Call that page and this floor. This is gonna be slider. Come on, there we go, slider. And then flat. And then page up. Alright, so I got everything named, so I'm going to just give that a quick save. Okay, so, so I'm going to go back to our page and then back to our drivers. So, what we want to do is we want to set this to transform channel. And then select sl slider. Then and then we want to select Y location. And we'll call, we'll just keep that there. Then we want to make sure this is set to scripted expression. Okay, so next we have to see our Y offset of our slider. So we're going to click on our slider, then we're going to hit N. Okay, Y offset is currently negative point nine five, so I'm gonna make that um let's make that zero. No, let's make that negative one. Like that. Okay, so then I'm gonna check on this. So our equation is going to be um, negative one minus bar. So, 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 so now if we slide this. Back pivot point back to uh, individual origins that would probably help too. Alright, so let me sign this here. And what's that not working? Let's see here. Okay. 
because that needs to be negative one plus four. Oops. There we go. So now we have our slider. Like so. So now that we have our controller, what we want to do is we want to limit the location. Our slider. So what we do is we're gonna turn off X. And we're gonna turn off. We're gonna turn off Y. And then we're gonna add a constraint to our slider. Location. And then let's get this quick save real quick. So you want minimum y to be negative one, and maximum y to be zero. So now we have our little controller here. Actually, we probably want max y to be uh, 1, and minimum y to be 0, and um, let's do a little adjusting to our equation here, we'll just make that bar. So, so now let's see. Okay, so now we have a controller and it only slides for our page. And so all it's left to do is we can adjust our little text boxes here.
right, so that's good like that. So, so now all we have to do is give a quick save here. This is one thing we want to do is we don't want our controllers to render. So let's select each of our controller elements. And all you have to do is just click this little button right here and they, those elements will all render. And we want some slider page up and uh, flat. Like so. so, so. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to set 